Welcome back, gang. So now that we have a bunch of users in our database and we can go to, you know, we have them displayed and we can go to their profile pages, what I want to do is start working on the friendship functionality. Now, this isn't really um, difficult, but there is a lot of complexity added to it. There are a lot of moving parts. So we're going to take it one step at a time and start with the easiest things first. So what I'm going to do is create a controller for it. So PHP artisan make controller and we'll call this, uh, we'll add it to the user folder and then we'll call it friend controller and then we'll make it resourceful. Okay. The next thing I want to do is create a model for it. So and a migration. So we'll call it um, PHP artisan mig make migration or actually let's do it this way make model friend and then we'll add the flag for migrations okay press enter and now if we go to our database migrations and all the way at the bottom of that we'll have our friends uh, friends table so let's go ahead and start with the first one that we want to put in the first field it's called unsigned big integer okay and that one the field name for that will be called requester okay then we'll create another one and we'll call this one user requested. So all this is really, um, we'll have the, use, the ID number of the user requesting and we'll have the ID number of the user being requested. So that's all that is. And the next one we're gonna do, it's actually gonna be a Boolean, okay? Now this Boolean is, we're going to name it status that's going to be the field name and the reason for this boolean is if the user and i are friends then the number for this will be one the boolean status of, will be one so that will be true if it's not if we aren't friends then our then we're automatically then we're then our status will be zero so we're going to add a default to this and this default will be zero so all the relationships will start at a zero um at a false so that we can turn it into true later on okay the next thing we want to do is go into our friend table and add these files i'm sorry the friend model and add these fields to the friend model so under use fact has factory will do protected Billable equals, and then we'll add the array. And let's just add the semicolon now. Okay, so the first one we'll do requester. The next one is user requested. Then the last one will be status. Okay, now because we are going to end up with a lot of functions, um, we kind of want to extract them and make them into a bunch of smaller functions. So um, I kind of researched this and I watched a whole bunch of videos and just kind of pulled together what I could possibly find. And I also went online and Googled and, you know, just did a bunch of research on it. The easiest way that I have found is to use a trait. Okay. So what we're going to do is, in the app folder we're gonna add a new folder called traits okay now in the traits folder we're gonna add a new trait and we're just gonna call it friendable dot php and what this will do is this will hold all of the functions that instead of putting them it'll be attached to the user model but instead of putting all those functions in the mu in the user model we can go ahead and just add them to this friendable trait okay 
So now up top here, we can just start filling it up a little bit or add the initial code. Uh, so we'll do, sorry, it's auto correcting itself. P, um, here we'll put PHP to open the tags. Okay. Um, the next thing is we want to give it a namespace of app traits. Okay. And then down here we'll open up the new trait. So it'll be friendable. And then we'll open up some curly braces and leave it at that for right now. Now we can go to the user model and here we can add the trait. So use friendable. Okay, and it already imported up top. So now we can close this, this, and this for now. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is on this top section, I actually want to create a component to hold our buttons that we're going to have up here. So the add friend, delete friend, and so forth and so on. Okay, so I want to do that before we actually get into the functionality. Okay, so we can close some of these up. We can go to resources, JS, pages, user, profile, and then we'll open up the show page. Now on here, right under the H2 that we have here, we're just going to go ahead and uh, create, um, we're going to add a component to this. We'll just go right into to that. So the component name is actually going to be called status, or let's go ahead and make it first. So components, we're going to add a new folder up here. And this folder is going to be called friend status. Okay. Now the component that we're going to make, we're just going to go ahead, put it in here. And this is going to be the main component holding the buttons. So we'll add it status.view. Okay. Let's just quickly flesh out some, just some stuff just to see see it on the page. Okay, JavaScript. And that's that for now. So we'll go back to show and we'll go ahead and continue adding our component. Status. Status. Okay. Now we need to import it down here. So import status from at slash components slash friend status slash status and then we'll come down here and add it to our list status okay now um, I can close this up now just to make sure that it compiles down. Let's come back here and refresh. Okay, cool. So it's sitting right there. Okay. So now that we have the status component imported in, we can go ahead and give it this profile prop because we're going to need the user's information to display different buttons based on our relationship status. Okay, so we'll put colon, we'll put profile equals profile. Okay, now we can come back to our status component. And in here, we'll add props. And the prop that we have is status. So let's go ahead and make sure that that's in that component now. So we'll open up our dev tools. Now we'll be able to open up view.
and we'll go to show pages layout app layout and this is the status component here so we just wanted to make sure that our profile prop was being added to it properly okay so now we'll close this up and this div we can now get rid of this status and give this div a couple of classes so it's just going to be flex margin top five and on small screens it's going to be mt0 okay now in here we're going to add a template and then we're going to add the if page props user id does not equal profile because remember we're grabbing it from the props here and then we're just going to make a quick form okay Now, we don't need this action. Uh, we can just leave form for now, um, just temporarily. And then we're going to have a button. And I want to give this button a type of submit. Then I want to give it um, class. I've got some classes that I'm just going to copy and paste so you can see them. Again, this code is going to be on GitHub so you can take a closer look. Uh, I just need to add text excess. Okay, so it's basically just the color center. It's just basic styling for the button. Okay, and the text. For now, we're just going to put add friend. Okay, so let's take a look and see what this is doing. So refresh. Now the page that we're on isn't the actual user's page, isn't our page, it's another user's. So this button should show up here. And it does. So now I also want to add, um, I want to add a little icon in this button. So we'll go back to our code and at the end of this add friend, um, I'm going to add another icon that we don't have yet. Uh, but for right this second, we'll just call it icon. Icon. Close it up. And the name will equal user plus and the classes that we're going to put on it are width the four height of four fill current and margin left of one let's go ahead and add the new icon that we need so we'll go to our icon component okay and then we'll just go ahead and add it to the bottom of these okay now i've already i've already um used them in svg omg so they're good um one thing that I forgot to mention, if, if you haven't seen the previous episode on the icons, definitely go and take a look at that. One thing that I did need to add that I forgot to add in that video was that once you download them and you have the actual paths and everything for each SVG, you don't have to keep re-downloading them every single time you need to use them. What I do is I tend to create a file just like this one and then I'll just store them all in there and that way I can just go ahead and copy and paste. It's much more efficient than trying to download it every single time you need to use that. So that's just a note on the previous video um, and that's how I do it. So, okay, 
getting back to what we were doing. Let's go ahead and close this out and then we'll refresh the page and make sure our icon is showing up the way it's supposed to. So refresh. Okay, great. Now we'll, we'll also be la adding um, an epic spinner to this button and the other buttons that we have. We're going to do that in a later episode once we get more of our buttons in place. Um, then we'll take care of it. But for now, uh, this is good. The other thing I want to do is um, we're going to have quite a few of these buttons. So what I want to do is extract it to its own component also, just so that um, we can reuse it in several places without having to have all of this code in every single one of them. Because the only thing that really changes are the colors, um, the background and the text color. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a new component folder here. And we'll call this one buttons. Okay, and this first one is going to be a file, and we'll call it blue button dot view. Okay, now I'm going to grab some code and copy it into here. Okay, so this is basically all of the classes that we have just put in the in the status button. It's all the same classes with the exception of the text size. That's the only thing that we need to not have in here. So this has the type and it's getting it from the prop here. Okay, so now this we need to import it into this status um, this status component. So here we'll add blue dash, so now we have blue button. Okay, we can keep the type submit and we can take all of this out. Okay, and now we need to import it here. So import blue button from at slash components slash buttons slash blue button. Okay, and under here we need to create a components um, the uh, export so components and then open curly braces and then blue button comma okay so what we want to do now is just take a look and make sure that that's a, that's compiled down we'll refresh and this should be the same okay and it is now the other thing I want to do is go back to our currently logged in users profile page and I want to make sure that that button doesn't appear and it doesn't. So just to be sure, we'll check another random user and there it is. Okay, fantastic. So now we can start adding some functionality to this button. Okay, so let's go ahead to our text editor. Um, we can close this out and we can close this out. Now the first function that I want to tackle is the add friend functionality. Okay and the way we do that is we add public function and the name of the function is going to be add friend. Okay in this add friend, we're going to need to set a variable. So user requested ID. Okay. And then open that up. Now, the variable that we'll be setting in here is friendship. And what this will do is create the relationship. Okay. So the first thing we want to add here is the requester because that's what we're looking for in our database. And this requester will be this ID, meaning the authenticated user's ID. Okay, let's import this class. Okay, uh, we want a comma there. Okay. 
Now the next thing we need is user requested. Now this will be the variable of top user requested ID. Okay, so whichever is the user that sends the request, that will be this ID. And then the user requested will be this user requested up here. Okay, so I know it doesn't make sense just yet, but it will, trust me. So now we need to add here a condition. If friendship, okay, um, we can just return one. Doesn't really matter because we'll be dealing with this in our controller anyway. And so if it doesn't, then we'll return zero. Okay, so now let's go ahead to our controller and start dealing with this. So friend controller. Friend controller. But before we do that, we actually do need to add a route for this. So we'll go to routes web.php. Okay. I'll move this over here because I think we're going to be needing it a few times. So under members, we're going to do, we're going to have a few routes in here. So we'll do route prefix and this we'll call friends. The name will be friends dot and this is a ziggy thing again um if you check the documentation for the ziggy routing app then um, package then it'll make complete sense while we're doing why we're doing this so now we add group function and then we need curly brackets no, we need a semicolon down there. Okay, so this will be the whole, this will hold all our friends routes. So the first one we're going to need is going to be a post request. Okay, now it's going to be slash user. But this, we're going to use root model binding again. So we need that, uh, the curly braces around that. Okay, then we need to bring in the controller. So it's friend controller class one more thing. I always forget this because this is this is new in Laravel 8. So comma and then the function we're gonna need is store. And then the name for this route will be store. Okay, now I uh, should have imported this already, but let's go up top and see. Friend controller. Okay, great. Um, one quick thing, the reason that we have name twice is because this name is going to be for every single one of the routes we add. So it'll be friends.index, friends.store, friends.update, whatever, um, whatever the functions are going to be added. So then we can just add the function names to the end. I like to add them as the names for the, as part of the names for the routes, just to kind of keep things clear and consistent. Okay. So now we can go back to the controller and go down to the store method. Okay, so in the store method, uh, let me just move this to the top. We're going to need request, but we're also going to need the user because we are uh, using root, root model binding user. Okay. 
and just as before we'll do copy paste and then we'll make this um we'll add the param up here so app models user and then the variable and this we need to make sure we import up top okay so now that we've created these functions in our trait or at least one function in the trait now we can go ahead and use that function in here so we can do auth user and this is just kind of a shortcut so that you don't need to import the auth facade up top auth user then the function is add friend and now we can use the user in this method because this is the user being requested id okay semicolon and um we'll just return actually let's just do a die and dump return die die and dump one if that was successful okay so we'll just leave that like that for now let's go to our we need to go to our status dot view uh status dot view okay and we need to come down under the component section and start adding a function so um the first thing we need is a data section okay and we'll open that up we'll return curly braces and now we can begin so inertia has this um during the upgrades to it within the last couple months um it's it's done things a little bit differently so normally let me go ahead and add the the return and then i'll explain what i mean so it's going to be add friend form and it'll be this dot inertia dot form they've got really cool um little form help helpers to kind of help make this less cumbersome with with um information makes it a lot easier so this profile user equals this profile and this profile is now coming from this prop okay or comma okay so as part of the documentation this form um it's normally in the documentation it looks like this now because we're going to be having multiple forms i decided to not do it exactly that way and just give the forms separate names just because they, when i tried it the first time there were conflicts in it so this I don't know for sure if this is 100% the way to do it, but it works and it works for me. So if you find a better way of doing it, then by all means, please share it with me. But we are going to be having multiple forms on this particular page. So we do need to somehow separate it um, in a way that's good. So with that being said, we'll move on. So the next thing I want to do is add methods. Okay. We'll open up some curly braces and now our method will be add friend add friend okay open up some curly braces and now this will be read like this this dot add friend form which is this form that we have here the specific one dot post we'll open that up 
And now we can add this route is going to be friends.store. And then as the parameter, we're going to add this profile ID. Okay. And just outside of the first parentheses there, we'll add a, a comma. And then we'll open up some curly braces. And now preserve scroll is true. And all this does is just keep it um keep whatever the scroll point is so that it doesn't jump up to the top of the page or down to the bottom of the page or something like that um that's what that preserved scroll is and that's an inertia thing okay um and the next line we're going to put on success now we add an empty function or an anonymous function, I think it's called, um, and then some curly braces, and we'll just leave it like that for right now. Uh, I think I need a comma here. Nope, actually, what I did was put parentheses here, and I'm supposed to put a colon. Okay. And now we don't have an error. We shouldn't let it recompile. Okay, the other thing we need to do is go up to the actual form and now add that method. Form um, at submit prevent and the method sorry D equals add friend okay and that's the method coming from down here okay so let's test this out we'll go and refresh and we'll open up our dev tools okay and then we're going to open up network so now if we click add friend see what we get okay so let's see our first error base table or view not found of course i forgot to migrate it sorry guys uh we'll go ahead and add that okay so it'll be php artisan migrate duplicate name requester okay well i'm sure you probably saw that and was screaming at the screen trying to get me to not do that but let's take a look yep sure did so now it's user requested i'm going to keep these errors in just so you can see how to debug them um because it, it usually helps me when I'm learning to do something to to see what could possibly go wrong. Um, so there's that. We'll go ahead and refresh and try it again. Oh, we still need to re-migrate. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, great. Let's go back here. Okay, let's try it again. Add friend. Okay, and now we got our die and dump, and that was that's coming from the controller. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, so we can close that and we can get out of that. Now, because we haven't set up anything to make sure that that's a valid entry into the database. We haven't done anything to prevent that yet. That should actually already be in the database. So let's take a look. 
Okay, social network demo. And then we'll look at the friends table. Okay, and there it is. So this is the first entry. The requester is user ID of one, user requested is seven, and the status is now zero. Okay, so we managed to successfully um, at least send a friend request. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a whole bunch of function functions to our friendable trait. And these functions will just check for different things okay um so the first one i want to add is the friends function okay um what this function is doing is just taking the collection of of friends where the status is one it's just checking to see whether or not we're friends where the requester is this id um and then it also checks for where the status is one and the user requested is this id so let's go ahead and import um import the uh, user model into this since we are calling it um and i'm sure i could have written that a little shorter but that's that's good for now um also i'm gonna be sure to post this code up to github so you can take a closer look and see what each and everything does okay now the next check that we're gonna have copy and paste that in here Okay, what this is looking for if there are pending friend requests. So whatever the friendship is, if the status is zero and it is in our database, then it'll check to see if there's a pending friend request from the from this ID. Okay, and then it's gonna push that into an, an array and return all of the users where that pending friend request is from. Okay. So the next one is just um it's just it returns a collection uh and the collection is for the current user model friends we want to pluck the ID and push it to an array um and this function is going to come in handy in a lot of different other things that we're doing too okay um the next one The next one is going to check if uh, the currently authenticated user is friends with um, this friends ID from that's in this array. Um, and this is useful if you want to put, um, like I said before, if you wanted to go to, um, let's say, the members page. And if you wanted to display um, some kind of icon to show that one of these users is your friend those that would be a good function to work with I'm not going to do that in this tutorial, but That's something that's worth taking a look at so I'm giving you a whole bunch of functions that you can just you know take it and and use it how you want to use it um, For whatever functionality you want to make Okay, so we'll paste the next one and this has the, it's a collection of pending friend request IDs and it's just plucking the ID and pushing it to an array okay now the next one is if you have a pending friend request sent meaning you as an authenticated user have sent a request but that person hasn't accepted, denied it, ignored it, or anything. It's just that it was sent, and it's it's just pending. Okay, so that's all that this is. Also, just so um, you can take a, a quick look, I'm also loading this with the profile model, meaning when it displays those users, it'll also have their profile attached, which has some of the information that we need, like the gender or the, I think it's gender and slug. Okay, so this is just loading those users with their profiles. Okay, so the next one is pending friend request sent ID. 
again, this is another collection. And it's a collection of the pending friend requests sent. So again, you this function is really useful if you want to do something um, similar to what I showed you before with the um, users page. Um, if you want to have another page with a list of the pending requests. Okay. The next one um kind of goes with that one as well and this is the function you have pending friend request from and then the user id and then it returns if an array this array the pending friend request ids um or rather the pending friend request id array then it'll return one return zero okay the last one I have here it's um, has pending friend requests sent to meaning you've received that meaning the other person has requests that have been sent to them okay and this is taken from this array or this collection rather and it spits them out or it returns a boolean on whether or not it's true so again these are all very useful for creating different sorts of um, things you might want to do with friendships that I'm not doing in this particular series. Okay, um, but I did think that that um, someone would find them useful. We are going to be using all of these. Uh, just, but what I'm saying is we are going to be using all of these. But there's a lot more that can be done with these functions. Okay, so now we're going to go all the way up to the top. And in this add friend function, let's go ahead and finish this off. Okay. So now we're going to take those functions that we used and we're going to go ahead and make those checks when we are sending friend requests. Okay. So the first one is if this ID equals the user request ID, meaning if the ID we're sending the request to is also the requester, the user being requested, then return zero, return false. Because you don't want to be able to send a friend request to yourself. And that's what this is saying. Okay, so now this is doing the check where this user model is friends with and then the user requested, again, the user that you're sending it to. If that equals true, then it'll return already friends. Now this isn't going to show up at all because we're going to be using it in our controller, like I said before, but um, it's good to have something there anyway. You can also return zero, return one, whatever you want to do. Um, I just did it here like this so that I could remember what these actually mean. Okay. So the next one is if this has friend pending friend request sent to the user request ID. So if you have a request that you have sent to someone the user requested ID and that equals true then it'll return already sent a friend request okay meaning you can't send them another one you have to wait until they do something with the one that they have again this isn't going to show up we're going to handle that in the controller okay um, and the last one is if this has pending friend requests from um, meaning if I am the authenticated user and I have a pending friend request from the user requested ID. Okay. And that equals one, then, then I can accept friend, which is the function, a function we haven't done yet. Um, but we will do it in the next episode and then request user, user requested ID. Okay. So that was a mouthful. That was a lot. Um, so now we can go back to the friend controller and put in a little bit of a check, okay? So here we're going to put if no user, then we're going to return redirect. Okay, return redirect. 
And for now, we're just going to turn it. As a matter of fact, we'll just do return back. And then we'll put with errors. And then we'll add. Um, I like to put uh, this key for our errors, the message key. Okay, and in case of adding some more information to it. Okay, so we'll say this user could not be found. Okay, and if it manages to pass that check, uh, if no user, if it manages to pass that check, um, and then we'll just do something, um, we'll just do return back for now because we're going to be, um, we're going to be using, um, sweet alert to make some, some messages. So we'll just leave it like this for now. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and push all this code up to GitHub. Um, if you guys like this uh, video, then please go ahead and like it uh, and subscribe to it while you're at it. Um, if you found any of this useful, for sure. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. I'm really I'm exhausted. I'd like to keep going, but I, I'm making a lot of errors. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.